praise be Jesus Christ, and blessed be Mary, our mother. Amen. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, in his report on faith, said, Today we all think we are so good that we cannot deserve anything but paradise. This comes from a culture that tends to erase from man all feelings of guilt and sin. Someone has observed that the ideologies that currently prevail all coincide in one fundamental thing. The obstinate denial of sin, hell, and purgatory. I say that if purgatory did not exist, it would have to be invented, because there are few things so spontaneous, so human, so universally extended in all times and cultures, such as prayer for the deceased loved ones. What does purgatory consist of? After death, the soul experiences the love of God with such intensity that it feels the urgent need to love Him with all its strength, but it cannot because it is sick from the consequences of its sins and needs to be purified. It is like a patient who is sick in his lungs and wants to breathe without difficulty and needs to be cured first in order to fully breathe with healthy lungs. In the same manner is the soul that wants to love God with all its capacity and suffers because it cannot love Him fully. However, the great thing about all this mystery is that the mercy of God allows the living beings to supply for the deceased, and thus they heal more quickly. It is as if we give them the appropriate medicine, that in an instant or in a short time would heal and purify them totally or as if we paid off their debt all at once through a plenary indulgence so they can go directly to heaven or paid it in parts so they gradually grow to the fullness of their love. A nun spoke like this about purgatory. Let's suppose that one day a door opens and a splendid and wonderful being appears. We are stunned and fascinated by his beauty, and he tells us that he is extremely in love with us. You have never dreamed of being loved like this. We have a great desire to throw ourselves in his arms to feel his love. But we realize that we have not cleaned ourselves for months, and we smell we have greasy hair, and our clothes are stained. And he says to us, Wait a moment, and go first to wash and clean yourselves. But his love is so intense that every minute of delay is an excruciating suffering. Well, purgatory is something like that. A delay imposed by our impurity before the full and final embrace with God. Purgatory is like an immense desire for God, an extreme desire to love God fully, which makes the waiting soul suffer unspeakably. However, we can say that purgatory is not a terrible prison in which the soul is a prisoner of divine revenge. No, purgatory is a painful purification to enable the soul to fully enjoy the happiness of paradise. Who could say that it is cruel 
to remove the lint from someone's eye so that they can enjoy the beauty of the landscape. Who would consider it cruel to make the sick person take a bitter medicine so that he can enjoy the banquet to which he is invited? The soul in purgatory is a sick soul that needs the medicine for help, prayers and masses to heal and be happy. In purgatory, we must pay even the smallest sin and wash the smallest stain. That's why we should not let venial sins pass easily, as if they did not matter. Every sin, even the smallest, is an imperfection and a lack of love for God. Those who say, with a little corner of heaven, I am satisfied, do not know what they say. They will have great sufferings with a vivid desire to do the good deeds they did not do, and they will see the many souls to whom their good deeds were not done. All laziness and all disinterest in improving will become in purgatory a great torment to the soul. Saint Faustina Kowalska said in her diary, Today I have known deep down inside my soul how horrible and frightening is sin, even the smallest. I would rather suffer a thousand hells than commit even the smallest venial sin. March 15th, 1937 Let's see what happened to the Dominican father, Stanislaw Czukowa. It is documented in the history of Poland by Brovius from the year 1590. One day, while this religious saint prayed for the deceased, a soul surrounded by fire appeared to him. He asked the soul if that fire was stronger than the fire on the earth. And the soul replied, All the fire on earth compared to the one in purgatory is like fresh air. Could you give me a sample of it? The religious saint asked. No mortal could withstand the least part of this fire without dying instantly. If you want to test it, extend your hand. The religious put his hand out and a drop of sweat or liquid fell onto it from that soul. His pain was so great that he screamed and fell to the ground and passed out. His brothers came and tried to assist him, and he told them what had happened to him, exhorting his brothers to flee, even from the smallest sin, to not suffer those horrible sorrows. Let us pray for the souls in purgatory. It is one of the best deeds of charity we can do. When we pass by a cemetery, we must always remember to pray for the blessed souls in that place. And every day at Mass, they must be commended with special interest. Unfortunately, today, the custom of cremation of corpse is spreading. Of course, the Church allows cremation when with it, the faith in the resurrection of the body is not questioned. Catechism 2301 However, we believe that it would be better to bury the body 
to have a place of reference and to be able to visit it and pray more for the deceased. Some families keep the ashes indefinitely in their homes, but the Pope has already repeatedly advised that they should be buried in a sacred place. Let us look at the case that occurred in Montefalco, Italy, from September 2, 1918 to November 9, 1919. These manifestations of a soul from purgatory are confirmed by some nuns of the convent and were confirmed by Bishop Pietro Pacifice, Bishop of Spolito, in 1921 convent of the Poor Clare Sisters, of the convent of San Leonardo to see the purging soul. But the soul was present to speak briefly and leave alms. Almost always ten lira. He rang the bell at the entrance for the Mother Superior to come down, even when all the entrance doors to the convent and the church were closed. He used to say, I leave here ten lira for prayers. When they asked him on whose behalf, he replied, I am not allowed to say it. On October 3, 1919, he said clearly to the Mother Superior, I am a purging soul. I have been in purgatory for 40 years for having dissipated ecclesiastical goods. On another occasion, he said he was a priest. In total, he left 300 lira and 38 masses were celebrated for him. On November 9th, when the Mother Superior came down, to the sound of the bell, he said, Mary, I thank you and the community for what you have prayed for me. I am now free from all pain. And at the request of the Mother Superior, he gave her the priestly blessing in Latin. The place where these manifestations took place into a chapel dedicated to pray for the souls in purgatory, especially for the deceased priests. The chapel was blessed on February 26, 1924, and a confraternity for the souls in purgatory began. Praise be Jesus Christ, and blessed be Mary, our Mother. Amen.